All right, so this unit is one of the most um, useful ones that we'll learn. It's called systems of equations, or the language that they're using nowadays is simultaneous equations. And just up front, you will need graph paper, so if you want to go ahead and do the entire thing on graph paper, you're welcome to. So what are we talking about when we say a system of linear equations? Well, it's two or more lines um, that have the same variables. So for instance, this is an example of a two-line system. It has like a little open brace, and then there's equations for two lines. Um, what we're going to do with it is basically figure out the point that is on both of these lines. So where do these things intersect? And when we start doing more of context, this will make sense. But a solution to the system is the ordered pair that satisfies each equation. So a complete solution is in fact a coordinate with an x co coordinates with an x coordinate and a y coordinate. You have to put both or else you haven't solved for the entire thing. So where on this graph does this line meet up with this line? So you figured there are several ways to do this and the three that we're going to explore is you could come up with a table, uh, you could graph it, and then the one that we ultimately want y'all to get to because it's far less work uh, is the algebraic substitution method. So in the solution um, with each, if you have a table, you figured it's going to be uh, where x has the same y values for if there's two of them, the y are going to be the same on that particular row. Uh, on the graph again, it's where the point where those lines are going to intersect. Algebraic substitution means just what it says. We're going to find one of the coordinates and then substitute it back in to find the other. And we'll show you what we mean. So do now number one, just so you kind of understand, is this point that I'm going to tell you a solution to the system? And then I want you to tell me why or why not. So here's your system. Do, 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 here and here, and I'm asking you, is the point 2 comma 4 a solution to this system? Well, if it is, it's going to plug in and make the first equation true, and it's also going to plug in and make the second equation true. So to show your work, you kind of got to think this. If I take this first equation, which is x minus y equals negative 2, when I plug in 2 for x and 4 for y, does it give me negative 2? So let's go ahead and test it. So the x value, we're saying 2, and I plug in with parentheses. The y, we're saying 4. And so 2 minus 4, does this give me, I'm still going to put this little question mark, a negative 2. Well, 2 minus 4 is indeed a negative 2. So it works in the first equation. That checks out. But to be a solution, it has to be on both of these lines. So don't just stop. Once you figure out that it works in the first, you have to prove that it works in the second also. So again, we're going to plug in 2 for the x. So 2 times 2 plus 4 for the y. Does that give me 6? So I crunch the numbers. We have 4 plus 4. This, in fact, is not 6. So we can conclude that this point 2 comma 4 is not a solution because it's not on the second line. So when it says explain, we will say just that. 2 comma 4 is not a solution to the system because, don't forget to explain, because it's not on the second line. So again, if it works on the first, it is only a solution if it works on the second. If you have a system with four lines, then you have to test it four different times in order to conclude it is a solution. So 2 comma 4 is not a system, a solution to this system. Now, we are going to figure out how to find the solution in three different ways. And now we're going to give you some context. So the problem that we're looking at is you have two charter bus companies. Uh, we have one called Main Street Bus, and here's how they charge things. A $40 rental fee, and then $2 per mile. And then we have a second one we're going to call County Bus Line, which is going to charge a $20 rental fee plus $3 per mile. No question mark. Um, then we got to answer these questions. A, for what number of miles will the charge be the same? And then B, what will the charge be? This is essentially at what point will these two lines meet up? And they're just, because it's context, we're analyzing it in terms of the independent variable and the dependent variable. So first off, you got to define your variables. And then, since these are systems of linear equations, we need to make two different equations. Okay, so define your variables, write the equation. So which one is the independent and which one is the dependent? Well, total charge in money, it depends on the number of mile travels. Therefore, x is the number of miles traveled, and y is the total charge, of course, in dollars. Don't forget your units. Right? So for Main Street, 
It has a $40 flat fee, and well, that goes at the end because it's a constant, and then charges $2 per mile. So we're looking at y equals 2x plus 40. And then county bus has a slightly lower flat fee, but it charges a little bit more with a variable fee per mile. So county bus would be y equals 3x plus 20. And if you have two different colors, it's good to sort of pick a color now because we're going to do several things with these two equations. So if we're going to solve this using a table, our first method, our table kind of looks like this. We have x, which is our miles, and then we have the cost according to the purple company, which is Main Street, and the blue company, which is County Bus. So at zero miles, neither one of these guys are proportional. Main Street starts at $40, and then County Bus starts at 20 And then you figured my table is going to go up by one mile, and so this Main Street goes up by two, County Bus goes up by three, and I could keep doing this, I could keep doing this, I could keep doing this. And what you start to notice that, you know, at mile three, this is at 46, this one's three more, so it's 29. These two numbers start to get closer and closer and closer. But we don't exactly know when this point is going to happen. For all we know, we can keep doing this like 70 different rows and not make it yet. So we know that it's getting closer and closer and closer, but that might take a while. So with the table, this is the concept. You're looking for the solution when at any particular row, for x miles, these two costs are the same. That's going to be your solution. Okay, So this is how you would do the table, but now let's go ahead and try to graph this thing. Um, the graph we know will work, but as you know with graphs, it's going to take a while to set up. So go ahead and set you up um, the graph that plots the number of miles and the total cost for both companies. So just pick a color for both of your bus lines. Okay. So your graph should look something like this. And the problem with the graph is, again, we don't know how to exactly scale it because we don't know how far up we're going to go in the miles. Mine, using maybe three quarters of this graph, graph paper, I said that x was the number of miles driven, so that's the independent axis here. Y is the total cost in dollars, it's the dependent vertical axis. Um, and then when I try to put the points on here, Main Street had that pretty high flat fee of 40, but then was charging $2 per mile. And County Bus had the lower flat fee, but the higher variable fee. So it looked like this. And when I plot Main Street, his y-intercept is up at 40, but then it's increasing by 2. So the way that I've scaled it, we're going to look at kind of these non-lattice points that are there. So it sort of renders this, this graph meaningless. So graphing is definitely a good solution. But for these numbers that are really, really big and we don't know how far we're going to go, let's try a different means, right? So this is the one that we ultimately want you to do. This algebra is called the substitution method. And you should appreciate the substitution method now that you've seen how much work it could be to make the graph and then how far up the graph and all the problems associated with the graph. So with the substitution method, method three, we're going to write out those equations again so we remember the scenario. So we have our system that includes the two equations here. And substitution means this. If we agree that y is y, right? y equals y for sure. And up here, y happens to be 2x plus 40. So do we agree that this is equal to this? Everything that I circled is all equal to. So if this is y and this is y, and this is why, and this is also why. Then all of this stuff is equivalent to each other. So when you set this up, I can conclude that this equation here is the exact same thing as this equation here because y is y. So if you set the first equation, which is 2x plus 40, equal to the second equation, which is 3x plus 20, then we have something that we've practiced a very long time, and this is the ultimate reason why we're practicing it. We have equations, an equation with variables on both sides. So how do we solve for that variable? Well, you get the variable terms together by moving the smaller of the two. So this is a coefficient of 2, this is a coefficient of 3. So I'm going to move it with APO or SPO only. So how do I make this nothing? Well, I SPO it, goes away, SPO it, goes away. So then we have 40 is equal to 1x, or just x, plus 20. So how do I isolate the variable? Well, I SPO 20. I SPO 20. So I've just found that x equals 20. And in the context of this scenario, x is our independent variable. So this is how many miles it's going to be when those costs are identical. So at the 20 mile mark, if I had kept going, 
in my table, if you look back, we would have ha have to keep going blah, 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 26, 27 rows down to figure out what that cost is. So we figured out what the mileage is going to be when they're the same. So the question is, how do we figure out what the cost is at the 20th mile? Well, you do kind of what the method is called, and you substitute. So if x is 20 miles, how can we figure out what y is? Well, you have two equations up here. Plug it into both and see what happens. So if I plug in 20 for my first equation where x is, I'm going to say 2 times 20 plus 40. Crunch the numbers, we got 40 plus 40. That's $80. Right? If we wanted to be super, super vigilant, we would also test it in with the second equation. So this I'm going to say 3 times 20 plus 20, and we should be getting the same cost. Because remember, if this was a table, when x is 20, the cost of these two companies are the same. So 3 times 20 is 60, plus 20, there it is. At the 20th mile, both of these companies are going to be charging $80. So if this weren't a context problem, we would say our solution is just the ordered pair 20 comma 80. If we were to graph this thing, if we were to look back at a graph, we would have to see that at 20 miles, both of them would be 80. Um, if we had done the scale a little bit smaller, we probably could have seen that. But if we started off really big, we wouldn't be able to tell. Um, so answering the question that we asked in the very beginning, for what number of miles will the charge be the same? Well, we just said it was 20 miles. And then what will the charge be? Well, we just said that was $80. So at 20 miles, it doesn't matter which company you go with. Um, less than 20 miles, you're probably going to go with the guy that has um, the lower startup fee. But then at this 20 miles, they switch positions. So the guy with the higher fee is only going to be good if you use it um, more than 20 miles. The guy with the lower rental fee in the beginning is better if you use it for uh, fewer than 20 miles. Okay. So now, for do now number two, you have two systems here, A and B. The first one I want you to try to solve graphically, and the second one I want you to use substitution. So you need some graph paper for this guy. This one you're solving with substitution. All right, so pause it, and then we'll talk. So with graph paper, on do now number two, we have two lines that we're going to graph. This guy has a positive intercept. This one has a negative intercept. This one's increasing, and this one's decreasing. So when I set this up, I'm going to think the y-axis is the vertical one, uh, the x-axis is the horizontal one, and graphs mean nothing unless they are scaled. So I'll just say that, um, I'll say each box is one, but I'll only label every second to keep it kind of easy to read. So we'll say two, we'll say four, we'll say six. Same thing here, negative two, negative four, negative six. And then we'll go ahead and plot them. Um, I'll use two different colors. I'll say that this one will be the purple line, and then the second one will be the blue line. So to plot this line, I first look at where it's crossing the um, y-axis, so the intercept is 7, so I'm going to put a point right here, and then it looks like I'm going up from there, so really I should have put this x-axis down more. So the slope is 1, so that means I rise 1, and then run 1, and then rise 1, and then run 1, and da 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 I can follow this pattern this way, I can follow the pattern back here, but it is a line, so it should be showing everything in one straight uh, diagonal in this case. For the second one, oops, I reverse those. So now this one will be blue, and this one will be purple. He has a y-intercept at negative 2, so I'm going to put a point down here. And then he has a slope of negative 2, which means he's going to fall one, fall 2 and run 1. So from the intercept, I'm going to say fall 2 and then run 1, and then fall 2 and then run 1. And the thing is, if I keep working to the right, and my solution is where these two lines meet, then if I keep going into quadrant 4, I'm never going to find the solution. So I have to apply that pattern kind of backwards. I do like kind of a reverse slope triangle. So that means here, and then up 2. Left, and then up 2. Left, and then up 2, and it looks like I got it. So at this point... Okay, so I forgot to label to the left of the axis, so make sure that it's the same. Every 2 is worth 2, so this is going to be a negative 2 here, 
and a negative 4 here. So if I look at where that point is, it looks like you get it by going left 3 and then up 4. So according to this, my solution is negative 3 comma 4. So if I'm going to say that's the solution, I have to make sure that it works in both of my equations. So for the first one, it's y plus 7, and the second one is negative 2x minus 2. If I plug in a negative 3 for the x and a 4 for the y, I get negative 3 plus 7, which is 4, equals 4. Looks like it works on that line, which is the... Um, blue one. And then here, if I plug in a negative 3 for the x and subtract 2, just make sure that it does give me the y value of 4. Negative 2 times a negative 3 is 6, minus 2 is indeed 4. So the order pair negative 3 comma 4 is the solution. So then we have our second one, which I told you to, gra uh, to solve using substitution. So how this works is I'm going to set this equation equal to this one. So 3x minus 5 is equal to x minus 3. I move the smaller x term towards the other. So I'm going to SPO this x. SPO the x. Gives me 2x minus 5 is equal to a negative 3. Don't forget about that negative. And then I APO the 5. Gives me 2x is equal to 2. And then I DEPO the 2. I found that my x value is 1. And again, this is only half of my solution. So I'm going to say that my solution tends to be, um, looks like it's going to be, x is 1. How do I find the y value? Well, I plug this thing in to my equations. So y equals 1 minus 3. Looks like it is 2, negative 2, according to the second equation. If I plug it in here, make sure I get the same thing. So I have 3 times 1 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. They end up being the same value. So y is negative 2. So solution solving with substitution comes out to 1 comma negative 2.